Greetings and welcome to another Autodesk AutoCAD Build Your IQ webinar brought to you by Product Support. Uh, my name is Zach. With me today are Naman and Michael. And uh, we are all over the country. Um, we've got East Coast and middle of the country covered, so uh, representing all over the place. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be uh, attending from. Thank you, as always, for attending. And uh, we'll get into our uh, weekly webinar here. So here we are, as always, ever faithful here every four weeks doing the Back to Basics track. Uh, not sure if you attend any of the other webinars, but hopefully you do. But this is the Back to Basics where we try to cover things that are just that, very basic functionalities of AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT specifically. And hopefully we show you some things that you might not have known about the program and you can get in there and dig in and, and find things that can help your workflows go a little more efficiently. And that's what it's all about, getting things done in less time. Time is money. Uh, as always, there's a chat window. Feel free to ask questions and uh, if there's time at the end, we'll We'll answer as many as we can. Uh, the sessions are always recorded. They're posted up onto YouTube on our YouTube channel for the Build Your AutoCAD IQ portion of our YouTube page. And uh, the, the data sets, the scripts, the uh, PowerPoint slides, all that's available there as well. So coming up in our near future, we've got uh, Beyond the Basics. Uh, Invoker is going to cover plot style tables with you next week. We will touch on that very, very briefly today, so as hopefully not to steal too much thunder from Voker as he delves deeper into plot style tables next week. Uh, coming up after that, we've got the third dimension, which uh, is an introduction to cloud rendering in AutoCAD 2017, and that's where it's all going. Uh, cloud rendering, very cool no longer have to have a supercomputer to get really, really great looking renderings because you can use our render farm in the cloud. Uh, coming up after that, we've got setting up templates for your office in AutoCAD 2017. And that's another one of those time saving things too. Instead of having to reinvent the wheel every time you start a drawing, uh, get your templates standardized for your office and how your office works best because we're all different. And then uh, toward the end of September, it's, it's us again, back to basics. And we're going to start into tables in AutoCAD LT 2017. Very powerful tool to use there. Here are a wealth of resources here in these links. And again, the, the PowerPoint slides will be made available after we're uh, all finished and all the time up there. So all these links, really good stuff. So. This week, we're going to cover plotting and uh, what it is, a little bit of history. Uh, we're going to plot from the model tab. We're going to plot from a layout. Uh, we're going to plot to soft plotters. And what do I mean by soft plotters? Well, we'll get into that. Uh, we're going to also plot to physical printing and plotting devices. We're also going to spend a goodly amount of time on the options and settings that go into plotting uh, because there are a lot of things that that happen behind the scenes that really if you set them up ahead of time you can save yourself some time and effort down the line as you go through and, and plotting your various drawings. We're going to go through the plotter manager. Uh, we're going to talk about plotter calibration and what that means and why you would need to calibrate your plotter with AutoCAD specifically because well sometimes you might have to and uh, you might uh, not know about that, so uh, hopefully after we're done here, you will know what that means, and if you ever should run into a problem where you need to calibrate your plotter with AutoCAD, you'll have the skills and the knowledge to do it. And uh, plot styles, again, we're going to touch on that very, very briefly, just in passing, really, so as not to take it too much away from next week's webinar it's with uh, Voker. So uh, before we get too far here, I want to find out a little bit about how everybody out there deals with um, deals with plotting um, and and how you and what you do with AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT before though uh, as always our, our first poll is the um, is this your first webinar that you've attended with us so hopefully um, we have some new faces here as always we like to see return customers but um, 
hopefully we get some new folks in checking us out and uh, maybe along the way learn a thing or two. As always, uh, on, the, on the learning end of things, I always like to point out we're not any substitute by any means for, for actual training. <laughs> this is just uh, going over some features in the programs here. So we'll close this poll out here. Uh, I'll go ahead and share the results with you there. Have a quick look. And as usual, overwhelmingly uh, return customers here. We do have some new faces, so welcome. Thank you very much for attending. Hopefully you like what you see here and attend the ongoing webinar series that we do every week, and uh, in particular our Back to Basics track here uh, toward the end of every month. All right, so we'll close that one out. Um, next, uh, which AutoCAD application do you use? Again, this is one we like to gather every time just to make sure that we're skewing our content. Um, and in the future webinars, we will be expanding into more of the vertical products. So we'll be covering uh, AutoCAD architecture, AutoCAD MEP in more detail than we have in the past. Um, so that's exciting for those of you out there that use those applications. So we'll close that out, quickly share the results with you. Looks like the majority, um, well, I don't know if it's a majority, but more people in this uh, webinar are using AutoCAD LT than any other product. How about that? Um, we'll go with that. So specifically, we'll talk a little bit about plotting and publishing here. Uh, do you plot from the model tab? Do you plot from layout tabs? Do you do a little bit of both? Or do you never plot anything? There are those out there that are strictly in a review only kind of mode, but you might use AutoCAD LT or a full AutoCAD product to do those reviews. So I never plot anything is a perfectly reasonable answer in those cases. So um, looks like we've got a, about three quarters of you voted on this here. So we'll go ahead and close it out. I think that gives us a pretty good idea of where we stand. So thank you. I'll share those results there. A slight edge to people plotting from layout tabs, but a good amount of people plotting from the model tab, too. Um, uh, only a few only plot from the model tabs, and that's that's about what I would expect, too, because layout tabs are really, you know, have a lot of advantages, in which we'll go through later here. And then, uh, last one before we get into it here, is uh, a little poll on soft plotters versus physical plotters and soft plotters what I mean is if you're if you're making PDFs you're plotting to a, a PDF driver or a DWIF driver or a DWIFX driver or you maybe have a JPEG driver you're making JPEGs out of these uh, anything is you know that isn't a physical plotter you know no hard copy so and again this this one looks like uh, the results are coming in here looks like about what I would have expected uh, it's a it's a pretty strong mix of both and uh, so we're just about to 80% there, so we'll, we'll call that good. And I'll just quickly share the results out with you here on these. All right. So we'll go ahead and close that up. So let's talk about plotting a little bit before we get into the nuts and bolts of it in the program. What is plotting? How is it different from printing? Just earlier this week, I had somebody with the AutoCAD Mac product, and I don't think the word plot even really exists in that program. Everything's print, print, print. Although if you type plot, you still get the print dialog. And they say, well, what? I don't plot, I print. What is the difference? We'll go through it here. Long time ago, in the beginning, the early days of computers, uh, there was printing and there was plotting, and they were definitely not the same thing. Printing was reserved for, and to be fair, early computer printers were were automated typewriters, pretty much. They just had taken the previous electric typewriters and hooked them up to a computer, and boom, now you're printing from your computer, and your your uh, previous electronic typewriter is now doing all these, this, what we call printing. Uh, but we did, do, did, do still have people doing blueprints and architectural designs and things, schematic, you know, uh, PCB uh, thing, uh, printouts, things that you needed to draw lines and circles and arcs and vector kinds of things that we know that we can do in AutoCAD. And for those things, we had plotters, and more specifically, 
you know, they only called them plotters then, but uh, come up with a retronym, pen plotters, because, well, back then the only kind of plotters were pen plotters. But uh, we'll move on here and take a look. This is what, or if you wanted to draw something in your computer, this is what it might have looked like back in the day. You had somebody painstakingly taken the time to convert a bunch of letters, as you can, if you look closer, that's just a bunch of letters all grouped together. And that's what computer artwork looked really like if you just had uh, a regular, you know, text editing program and, uh, and a regular printer that could only print letters. And a lot of people back in the day, you might recognize that sort of thing and think, wow, that... I remember those days, that's that's a while back, and indeed it is. So those things were sometimes created by what you see here. And what that is a corner of right there is a daisy wheel. And those, again, harken back to the days of electric typewriters, where you just had a wheel going around and it would, you'd hit the key and whatever hammer would come on and hit the paper. Uh, the next thing here, uh, this isn't really from a computer printer, honestly, it's from an electronic typewriter, but effectively that's what they took and put into the early computer printers to, um, you know, to print from a, a drum head kind of printing device. And they would all uh, be lined up with a, a ribbon, like you see there toward the back there, a ribbon full of ink, and your hammer would come along and hit the back of the key, and it would hit the ribbon and hit it onto the paper, and to make an imprint on the paper is very... I don't know, it seems seems barbaric, seems so far back compared to what we have today. But that's how it was, that's how it started. Uh, you had drum heads, the same thing. The drum would turn, the hammer would come along and hit it when it was in the right position, it would hit the ribbon onto the paper, and that was that. Um, we've come a long way. Uh, what are these, you ask? Are they lipsticks? Are they the crayons you get for your kids at Red Robin? No, they are uh, pens from a early an early pen plotter. Uh, this one's from a particular, I think it was a Commodore printer, or a Commodore plotter. So those are plotter pens. And the pennies there, just to give you an idea what size the things were, they were they were pretty small. And to give you an idea, and this isn't what things looked like then, but this is to give you an idea of what was going on, just a, a very crude representation. You had those little pens uh, aligned to things attached to servos and motors and things that would move across the paper, and they would literally draw your lines for you based on what you were doing in your early CAD programs. Uh, it all seems so very, very long ago, but that's that's how it was. This, of course, is a newer device, and that's a modern pen in the thing. But uh, the people have made devices now to act like the former pen plotters did back in the day. So uh, that's a little bit of history and, and why plotting and, and printing are different words. But in today's parlance, really, in AutoCAD, you can use them interchangeably. We still maintain the plot command in AutoCAD just because, uh, well, for if no other reason, then it's legacy. And uh, people like to think of plotting as uh, something that uh, only AutoCAD can do. Uh, really, in today's wide format printers, I mean, they're, they're just ink jets at this point, uh, big ink jet head connected to a long, you know, uh, metal, uh, rod that goes back and forth with the motors and um, you know effectively it's just a large inkjet it's just a wide format inkjet at this point so there's really nothing differentiating them other than the size really so today when we use the word plot usually we're talking about large format uh, plotting devices wide desk jet or inkjet uh, printer type devices so how does this all apply to us in the world of AutoCAD well let's go into a little further and at this point I will hand it off to my colleague Mike and he will uh, go through a few of the things with us then I'll take it back and we'll we'll finish it all out and then get some questions from you and uh, answer those as time allows so here we are I'll hand it off to Mike thanks Zach so, so I guess I'm gonna show everybody what uh, you know how to calibrate plotters on my end but I kind of want to continue with that uh, history lesson that was actually really cool you're too Alrighty. kind. You're too kind. <laughs> uh, alrighty. So here we are in AutoCAD. Uh, so I'm, I'm in LT right now. Um, so first and foremost, you know, you have your your drawing set up. You want to go in and actually be able to plot it. Um, first things first, probably a good idea to actually set up your plotters. 
And for that, we have our Plotter Manager. So to access the Plotter Manager, you just go into the Application tab up here, go down to Print, and Manage Plotter. So that'll bring up the Plotter Manager. You'll notice that it is basically a Windows Explorer window that has quite a few files in there and a nifty little add a plotter wizard. So, um, as you can probably imagine, I just got to this Windows Explorer plotter manager through the application, but if you really wanted to, you could also just open up an instance of Windows Explorer and go to this folder. Um, by default, you know, when you install AutoCAD, it'll go to this location, so you know, multiple ways to get to the same location. That's a pretty long path, though, I think, uh, going through the that application. That is a pretty long path. Yeah, that's yeah. much easier to go through the application. I don't want to remember yeah. that path. That's really long. Yeah, you're right. But it's there if you want it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you'll notice that there's a few things in here. You have your PC3 files, so those are your, your plotter configuration files. Um, you also notice that there's two folders in there, plot styles and PMP files. I'll uh, you know be going over it in a little bit. So... These PC3 files, they actually have the plotter configurations in there. Um, if I were to open one of them, you can play around with you know, some of the settings. So right now I'm actually opening up one of the built-in uh, you know, plotter configurations that already come you know, when you install the, the application. So play around with you know, paper sizes, that you know, po uh, plotter calibration that uh, Zach was mentioning earlier that I'm actually going to touch on in a little bit. You also have some custom properties that you can play around with. Um, so that custom properties kind of changes depending on the, the plotter configuration that you're looking into. So what I'm going to actually do right now is go to the Add a Plotter Wizard and show you how you would create your own plotter configuration. So, as you saw, I you know, launched the, the Add a Plotter wizard. I have this nice little window that pops up. kind of organizes everything for me. Um, so, first, steps, first step kind of is uh, deciding what kind of you know, configuration you want. So, you'll have the My Computer or the Network Plotter server. You'll notice that it's mentioning an Autodesk Heidi Plotter driver. So, these plotter drivers actually are provided by the manufacturers and they're optimized to actually work with AutoCAD. So they're not made by us, even though the name is right there, but it's actually provided to us by the manufacturers. Um, for simplicity's sake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a system printer. So I'm actually going to set up a plotter configuration with one of the printers that's already installed on my computer. So here's you know, a few of them. I'm going to select this one because I know that this one's a stone throws away from me right now. Click right here. Then you have the option to import a PCP or a PC2 file. So those are you know, older versions of plotter configuration files. If you want to you know, bring it into your new PC3 file, you're more than welcome to. Um, that's you know, just import file and you would just look for wherever you have those files located on your computer. I don't have one, however, so just going to click next. If you want to give it a you know, special name, like printer that's near me, you know, plotter that's near me, plotter that's on the other side of the room, go ahead and do that here. And then when you're finishing up, you're going to notice that you have the calibrate plotter option. So I'm going to remember that for a little bit and it'll come in pretty, pretty useful. So I just created a, you know, my new uh, plotter configuration. It's down here. This folder up here, the PMP files folder. This contains PMP files. What are those? So those are your plotter calibration files. And you may be asking yourself, well, why do I need to calibrate my plotter? It should plot exactly what I'm, you know, plotting on from the program. It should plot fine. Not always the case. Let me walk in here. I'm going to open up the PC3 file. Go to Device and Document Settings, settings Plotter, Calibration. 
then I'm going to go to Calibrate Plotter. And then you get a nice, another nice little window that's similar to that of Plotter Wizard, like the configuration of it. But this one does something a little bit differently. So what you end up doing here is you end up plotting a test page. Um, you can choose whatever paper size you want. Um, once you choose a paper size, it gives you a few values here. So you can decide what you want the height and width to be. So what this is actually going to you know, determine the outcome of is the rectangle or the square if you make it, you know, the same values. Um, it'll print out a test page with a rectangle on there. And what you'll do is print the sheet out, which when I press next, it's actually going to plot it. Print it. So I'll go to the plotter, grab the sheet, measure it out, and then I could right over here, you'll notice it says measured height, measured width. So at this point, you'll write down, okay, well, my, you know, 8 inch by 6 inch rectangle is actually 7.5 inches by 5.75 inches. I hope it's not that off, but you can go in there and actually calibrate so that the potter could, you know, make up for that uh, discrepancy in size. Click next because I measured it on my end. Take my word for it. Also, for anybody that's curious as to what it actually looks like, this is the famous Calibrate plot sheet. <laughs> it's nothing more than a sheet that has a rectangle in it. Now, how many times did it take you to get it zeroed in, Mike? Did it just uh, take a couple times? And, and after you after you go back in and type in the actual measurement of the rectangle, what happens next after that? Um, what do you mean? Well, when, you know, when it first says it's going to go 6 by 8, and you grab the piece of paper off the plotter and you measure it, and it's just under on one measurement, and it's just over on the other, and you key in those values then, what happens after you key in those values? What does it do? Does it print out so another? Uh, to my, it didn't for me. Did it print out another rectangle and you measure it again? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Okay. But all the nuts and bolts stuff. Sorry to throw the detail in there. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So you have your, you know, well, this is going to create a PMP file for us, but you have your, you know, calibration all done. And you can, here you go, you can check your calibration and test it again. But what ended up happening there was I created my you know, plotter configure, uh, calibration file and it automatically added it to my PC3 file. So it attached it. You'll notice if I go back to Plotter Manager over here and the PMP files should have that new PMP file right there. So, you know, we went ahead, calibrated it, and added the PMP file to that PC3. So if you, you know, for some reason want to, let me close out of this, if you want to, you know, have multiple PC3 files uh, for the same plotter, so have multiple configurations for the same plotter, you don't want to have to go and calibrate it each specific time, you could just add you can actually add the same calibration file to those plotter configurations so you don't have to you know, keep doing it over and over and over and over again. Now, in order to use the calibration values that I've done with my measurements, though, I, I need to pick the PC3 every time when I plot. Is that right? I can't just pick, pick the system printer from which it was created. Um, wait, what do you mean? When I go to plot... Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to have in my list of available plotting devices, I'll have the PC3 in the list, yes. but I'll also have USB OS to PRN02 available to choose from the list. But I don't want to choose that one because then I won't get the calibrated uh, values. No, so... so I definitely mean, want to choose the PC3 thereafter. Yes, exactly. Because otherwise you won't be using that calibration anymore. You'll just be printing straight from the system plotter. And your measurement, measurements could be off there, and that's the whole reason you exactly. calibrate in the first place. Okay, gotcha. Exactly. All right. So, you uh, we have our PC3 files, so we know what those, you know, what these guys are. 
Um, something actually pretty cool. Let me open up one of these guys. So these are actually the, some of the built-in um, soft, you know, PC soft plotter PC3. So when I plot using these, I'll actually have a, a PDF. If you go into device and document settings, you can play around with some of the custom properties. And you know, there's quite a few settings. In, well, not too many settings in here that you can play around with, but very important nonetheless, you can decide you know, how you want the quality of your prints to come out. Um, and then you could also include how much information you actually want in there. So you'll see that you have data, so you can include layer information, hyperlinks, bookmarks, and then for the font handling, um, you can add that in if you want to as well. If you're coming from a couple of versions ago and you're looking in your list and you're saying, hey, I don't have high quality print and I don't have smallest yep. file or web and mobile, uh, that's because those presets were recently added in the past couple releases of the products as a result of people uh, saying to us, hey, you know, I've got all these different quality settings I want to set and I'm tired of going into my my DWG to PDF PC3 every time and changing it and saving and, and uh, can you guys just give me some presets so that's what we did we gave four presets and I we think that it encompasses the majority of what people were asking for as far as the the, the, the width of uh, the different types of uh, quality settings that they wanted so and, and even the ones that we we provide you can of course still go in and edit them and change the quality settings if they're not exactly to your liking and save it as a different file and use those from that point on exactly I think that that was added in 2016 if I'm not if I'm not mistaken I think you're right all right yeah okay cool so went over PC3's plotter configurations went over the PMP files a little bit and then the last one is plot styles. So in here, you'll notice that you have quite a few plot styles and you're wondering what are those. So these are plot style tables and they contain some, several like the plotting settings that you use when you're actually plotting your drawings. Um, this actually lets you, you know, you don't have to go over the redundant steps of deciding how everything is going to look when you're plotting it. Um, so you'll have these files in there to kind of play around with the look and feel of what you're plotting. Um, Zach is actually going to show you, what, you know, some different results that you get when you play around with them. Um, and as we had mentioned earlier, Volker is going to go, you know, more in depth into, you know, how to create your own, how to play around with them. Um, but you know, I'll go over it very lightly right now. Um, you might have noticed that there are two different types of you know, plot style tables. You'll have the CTV extension over here and the STB. So they do different things. So the CTV one, or color dependent plot style tables, um, you specify the color, line weight, line type, and so forth of objects on a specific color. So you know, if you want to say, hey, everything on red, I want it to look this way, you can do that. Everything on blue, I want it to look this way. You can do that. So hence the name color dependent plot style table. The STB one is the name plot style table. There you can again specify color, line weight, line type, etc. of objects on a specific layer. So you know everything on this layer that I've created, I want it to look a particular way. Um, so you know you have that option there um, if you want to play around with the look and feel based on the color or based on the layer the objects are on. Um, you have that freedom. Um, like I mentioned earlier as well, Zach actually is going to go and show, you know, play around with these guys a little bit so you'll get to see what I'm talking about. Alrighty. So now you may be wondering why I went through that and showed you all of these you know, configuration files, all the, the calibrate plotter, the plot styles, like why you know, why go into it? Why can't I just go to print or plot and just select you know, a system plotter, one of my built-in ones? So the USB one that I you know that we created the PC3 file. Here you go. It's right here. Why can't I just select that one? Well, as Zach kind of mentioned earlier, if I were to select that one, I wouldn't have my calibration set in. That calibration comes in with the PC3 file. 
Additionally, if you're in an office that has a bunch of users, you probably want everybody to be you know, plotting consistently so you're not having, hey, all the plots from uh, that guy look one way, all the plots from that guy look slightly different. Same thing, just slightly different. Um, it's probably a good idea to have everybody plotting consistently, um, and that's actually where your support paths come in really handy. So let me go over here. So under options, under files. So you're going to see the option for printer support file path. You see these guys in here. Um, if you noticed, the you know directory that it's looking for was the, the same directory that, that we were looking at before. So this, let me actually pull it up. It's probably a little bit easier to visualize. Uh, manage plotters. Keep bringing this guy down here. Here's options. Ah, it's going to go to the back. Okay, that's fine. Well, take my word for it then on that on that one. Um, it is the same, you know, directory, same location. I believe. So you you'll know. Thanks, thanks, Zach. Glad you believe me. <laughs> Everybody's so quiet. Just kidding. Um, so here you go. You have a few options here. So your printer configuration search path printer description file search path, and the plot style table search path. Um, printer configuration search path kind of tells AutoCAD, hey, go look for my printer configuration files here. So my PC3 files go here, pull them from there, please. Okay. This one, the printer description file search path, gets the .pmp, so the uh, plotter configuration, or the, the plotter calibration, sorry, pulls it from there. And the plot style table search path, as you could probably have imagined, pulls the plot style um, files, so the CTVs and the STB files. Um, now, where this becomes really handy is you can store these files on a network location and then have everybody's AutoCAD point there so that you're not you know, using the PC3s that are on your computer. You're using PC3 files that you know, everybody in your office is using so that you have consistent plots in your office. Can I complicate uh, things for a second, Mike? I'm going to throw something in here. If you want to, uh, go for it. A couple of, a few releases back, we added the ability to, there's an add button you see over there on the right-hand side. If you add, you can actually add more than one path under yes. each of these sections. It used to be that there was only one path available. So your plot style tables, you only had one path to one folder that would house your plot style tables. Now you can have multiple in here. So if you have some plot style tables that you just want to tweak around and mess around with, and you store them locally on your system, you can do that. You put the path in here. Also, as Mike mentioned, with the standardization of your office, you might have a path that goes to a network server that has the ones that everybody uses in the office. Now, the key here is, okay, well, what if I go to a plotter manager? You know, or if I go to a plot style manager, which folder is going to come up in Windows Explorer? The answer to that is whichever one's higher up in the list. So the one that's directly underneath plot style table search path, for example, is the one that's going to come up when you go to the plot style uh, manager from within the program. But just keep in mind that you can add multiple paths here in case you happen to have multiple locations from which you want to pull plot style tables or PC3 files. Yep. Also, pro tip, if you're putting you know, these files on a network location, you don't have to include the add a plotter wizard. So that way you don't have, you know, everybody in the office creating their own PC3 files in that network location. Um, just a little pro tip on that one. Alrighty, so moving on, there's a plot and publish tab over here. And this one has quite a few fun options. And this is where I'm actually gonna hand it off to Zach so that uh, he can walk us through some of them. Very good. Thank you, Mike. We'll wait for the screen to catch up to me here. And, there you uh, go. Excellent. There you go. Floor's yours. Thanks. All right. So, uh, hopefully, everybody can see my screen at this point. We're looking at the Plot and Publish tab within Options, and there are a lot of things in here, so we'll try not to take too long to go through them, but try to give them all the 
attention they deserve. And speaking of not deserving much attention, this first section in the upper left-hand corner here, default plot settings for new drawings. Now, when it says new drawings here, it doesn't mean any time you go up to hit File New and make a new file, because most of the time, File New is going to be pulling from a template, and a template is already going to have the plot settings and devices set up within it. So really, by and large, this first section you know, for, for new drawings, it only applies to, like if you go through the wizard and you say start from scratch, it doesn't use a template for that. That's where this setting would come in. Or if somebody sends you a drawing from pre-2000 version AutoCAD, it also might not have the things saved in it. So this would apply to that also. So for the most part, this, this first section here, it's, it's largely for legacy purposes, so you can ignore it. Um, feel free to. Um, you know, a lot of times people say, well, how do I set a default printer in AutoCAD? Well, the answer is you really don't. You, you set a default printer in your template so that anytime you make a new drawing file, the, the model tab and any layouts you've got set up are already set up <clears throat> to use your, your default or chosen printer device. But by and large, unlike most other programs, we don't have a setting in AutoCAD for what is my default printer. It's, there's, it's on a per drawing basis. So moving on, we've got the plot to file option here. And this is for any operation where you're plotting to a file, be that a PDF or a DWIF or a DWIFX, or if you are <clears throat> plotting to, a, say, a regular physical plotting device driver, like, uh, say, but you're going to take, but you don't have a, a plotter in house. Like you've got a, a a company down the street, you take all your job, your plotting jobs to, and they've got a, you know, a 42 inch plotter down there. Well, they tell you what make and model it is. You go back to your system, you install the driver for that device. But when you go to plot, you check the box, and I'll show you where that is here. We'll go to plot. Oh, and uh, while we're on it, whenever you go to plot. It's going to give you this warning until you tell, tell it not to show you it again. Uh, it's a relatively recent dialog that we have in here. And really, it's just letting you know that there's this thing called publishing or batch plotting. So you don't always have to do a single plotted sheet in case you really want multiple sheets plotted. That's what this is for. But in this case, I want to go on and plot a single sheet. So that's what I'm going to choose. So this box right here, plot to file. If I choose any of my installed devices, I might have the option to plot to file. And when I hit OK, it's going to make a PLT file for me, a plot file. And it's that PLT file that's formatted with the driver for the specific device. So in the example uh, that I gave, uh, the DesignJet 500 that your printing shop has, you install the DesignJet 500 driver and you make a PLT file using it. You take the PLT file down to them, and it comes out exactly the way you want it to. That's the theory, anyway. Um, and uh, you can, of course, when, when you plot to a file, it's going to prompt you for where you want to save the file. So this is just the default location. You can change it wherever you want to anytime you get prompted for where you want to save a file. So again, this this is a setting that not a lot of people pay much mind to since you get prompted for it anyway. The next one, a little bit more important, uh, background processing options. Uh, when you publish, you know, since you're going to be doing multiple sheets in a published job typically, it's going to take longer than plotting a single sheet is. So for that reason, by default, publishing is set to publish in the background. And what that means is as soon as you start the published job, it will return you back to AutoCAD, and you can continue doing what you do in AutoCAD instead of having to wait for all of those sheets to be sent to the printer or the creation of a PDF or a DWF. So that can save you time by going back in, and, and it just runs it in the background. If you don't want it to run in the background, of course, you can you can uncheck the box here. And both of these checkboxes together, um, as it shows here in the in the the tooltip pop up there, the system variable background plot is what manages all this. Like, for example, uh, background plot equals one might mean, uh, and I don't know off the top of my head what they are, but it might mean publishing and is, uh, is set to on in background and uh, plotting is set to work in the foreground, for example.
So there are four different values of that uh, background plot system variable, and that's what it does. Uh, plot and publish log, this is where you want it to save. And by default, it's going to save it to, uh, well, it's actually going to save it uh, to your user-specific folder for AutoCAD. Uh, and that's something that's set in the Files tab of Options. Uh, if we look at it real quick here, the log file location is this. Of course, you can change that, put it somewhere else. doesn't really matter. Uh, and you can also choose whether you want one continuous plot log for all of your plot and publishing jobs, or if you want each one to have its own individual uh, log file, which could really fill up a folder after a while. So most I, that's why the default's one continuous plot log. It just it's easier that way to manage. Um, auto publish disabled by default, not very commonly used from from what I experience with interacting with customers, but automatic publish does exactly what it says it's going to do here. It's going to it's going to make a soft copy of the drawing, <clears throat> be it in DWF format or PDF whenever you do <clears throat> various options. And those options are determined in this dialog here. So we'll go in here. Uh, by default, it only does auto-publish when you save, but you can also say auto-publish when I close, or prompt me to do it when I save, or prompt me to do it when I close. So uh, the prompt options give you a little bit more flexibility because it isn't going to happen every time. It is going to prompt you every time, though. Um, and it's going to, by default, it's going to put it in wherever the drawing file happens to reside, or you can choose specific locations where you want the thing to go to. Again, auto-publish isn't all that popular of, a, of, a, of an option. I haven't hardly run into anybody who uses it, let alone brings it in for a support case, but it, it does come up from time to time, so it's good to know that it's there. So your general plot options over here, um, and this really only is if you're changing the plot device. So if somebody sends you a, a job or a, a drawing file and it's set up for their printer, for example, you're going to change it to your printer. Now, the default is to keep the layout page size if possible. So if, if they're using a wide format plotter and you are using a wide format plotter, keeping the layout page size, no problem. Okay, You can both do size D, no, no problem. Um, the other option, though, is to use the plot device paper size. So if you're you know, say printing to a device that can't go any larger than 11 by 17, but somebody sends you a D-sized drawing, well, you're going to change from their plotting device in the drawing to your plotting device, and you might want it to use the largest paper size possible, which in this case would be 11 by 17. Um, otherwise, if it's set here on this first option, you'll get a pop-up that says, hey, look, your device doesn't support this paper size. What do you want to do? And it'll give you a choice at that point. Uh, system print spool alert hardly ever comes up. It's here, hardly ever comes up because most of the time you're not going to have a problem when you're plotting um, as far as from a spooling standpoint. You might have other problems like the driver can't be found or can't communicate with the device, but um, this is just a, if you want to go back and track these errors in a log, that's what this is for. Again, most of the time never comes up. OLE plot quality. OLE is object linking and embedding, as you know, and it's whenever you copy something from one program to another. Like if you copy an image out of Photoshop and paste it into AutoCAD, it's going to come in as an OLE object. And this just determines what happens when you go to plot a drawing that contains an OLE object. So um, by default, it's automatically select, uh, but you can standardize this if you want to and set it up so that uh, OLE plot quality is always one of these three choices, depending on what type of OLE objects you have. Personally, I never set this in here. I just I change it within the property of each OLE object because it might be a picture. It might be a spreadsheet. Each, each OLE object you use might be a different type, so it might vary on what you want to set for the plot quality, and you can do that through the, through the properties palette. Also, this here is the use OLE application when plotting. So uh, if you, for example, copied something out of Excel and pasted it into your document, your AutoCAD drawing, uh, do you want Excel to open up every time you go to plot a drawing that contains an Excel object? Probably not. But just in case you did, you can check this box and that'll happen. Uh, hide system printers here. Uh, this means, uh, and Mike explained to you the distinction between system printers 
versus PC3s. Um, if you only want to use your PC3s that you have configured and you don't even want the choice to choose a system printer, you check this box and they no longer show up in your pull-down menu for selecting a device when you go to plot. And that can eliminate user error if you have both PC3s and system printers that have the same name, for example. That takes, our, it takes the decision out of the user's hand as far as which one they pick, if there's only one in the list to pick. Uh, plot offset relative to. Uh, most of the time this is printable area. Uh, there's edge of paper available. but um, and, and this is if you set up a plot offset when you plot. And we'll go over that in the plot dialog here. Plot stamp settings. Uh, if you want to use a plot stamp, you can configure your own plot stamp, and it'll show you a little preview over here. Um, some people use it, some people don't. It's, it's something that's completely up to you. Uh, you can include all sorts of things on it, and here are the configuration settings where you want to save it. Um, there's some advanced options as well. You can get really, really into the weeds on this, but uh, know that it's there. That's, that's the button that takes you there. And then plot style table settings. This controls what happens when you make new drawings. <clears throat> and again, new drawings, they mean new drawings based on no templates. So uh, sort of an irrelevant setting in here for the most part. Uh, this uh, goes between named plot styles and color dependent plot styles, which Mike had explained. Um, some other settings down here, but for the most part, this, this whole dialogue in here um, oh, one thing here, if you go add or edit plot style table, this just launches that Windows Explorer window that we looked at before, brings up the, uh, the styles manager. And that also comes up if you go through the application menu and go through print and say, show me my plot styles, same thing there. So, <clears throat> so that's that. Those are your options on the plot and publish tab uh, within the options dialog. Now, how does this all come into play when we go to plot? Let's, let's do some plotting. Let's just do a quick plot here from the model tab. And by our poll, uh, usually uh, most of you are out there doing a combination of plotting from the plot tab, uh, the model tab rather, and layout tabs. <clears throat> so if precision is important, and I'm assuming that it is, it isn't always, um, you want to be able to plot to a scale by which you can take a ruler, lay it on the paper, and have things uh, scale out correctly. So let's take a look at the plot dialog from the model tab. Uh, page setups we're not going to get into here. That's another class. That's another webinar. <laughs> um, but uh, for, for my testing, I'm just going to use the DWG to PDF device for plotting. Uh, by default, it's going to plot to a file, of course, because it is a file. There's, there's no other option when you're going to a soft plotter, so that's checked by default, of course. Uh, PDF options, you got your quality settings in here. You can change those if you like. Uh, paper size, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you want to edit the paper sizes within the DWG to PDF, you can go into Properties, and you can go into um, you know your custom paper sizes here, and you can hit Add. And you can add paper sizes, adjust the margins, all that saves it in the PC3. Updates the PMP file while it's added, actually, too. Uh, the plot area just determines what you are plotting. So in this case, since I'm plotting from the model tab, I want extents. That means the extents of everything. Now I could do window, in which case I get a prompt to draw a little window around the area I want to plot. And if I do a preview of that, I only see just that small area that I selected with the window. But in my case here, I want to plot to extents. Uh, and here's where it talks about, I mean, we mentioned ago, a moment ago, the plot offset. Uh, and this is whether it's either from the edge of the paper or from uh, the uh, edge of the, the extents of the, the objects. So that's what uh, this controls. And if you want to center the plot, you can center the plot here. Now fit to paper completely ignores your scale and just does exactly that. It fits what you've drawn to the extents of the paper. Now at that point you're not really going to have any kind of measurable scaling ruler to paper uh, being able to have it scaled correctly. So, But if you just want to show somebody as large as possible on the piece of paper that you have for the printer device that you have, go with fit to paper. Uh, for most cases though, uh, you're going to be plotting to scale. Now 
since I'm plotting from the model tab, this scale be, uh, option here becomes important. So uh, what I've got, you can see back there is 24 inches by 18 inches. So I'm going to scale that and I'm going to go to an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. So I'm going to go, you know, every 3 inches uh, is 12 units. On uh, so, uh, so for this top line here, since it's 24 units, uh, that should come out to be six inches when I measure it. And so we're going to apply that. We're going to do a preview here. And this is a preview of my eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So you can imagine that this piece of paper is 11 inches long or wide in this case. Uh, then the red line is going to measure six inches. So scale achieved. And that's the, that's the goal there. Uh, plot style tables, if we want to apply one, like say monochrome, for example, uh, it's going to make everything black because the monochrome plot style just says, look, no matter what color it is, make it black. And there we are. Uh, same thing goes with grayscale. You can have things shaded um, according to what color they were. You can see the, the dimensions are a little lighter than the rectangle is there. Uh, shade viewport options. Uh, you're not going to have all these options in LT uh, because LT don't have things like uh, the visual styles here, realistic and conceptual and whatnot. So uh, these are largely uh, just the, the, the fuller auto, full AutoCAD versions, the verticals, but not LT. Your plot options here, a lot of check boxes. They're pretty self-explanatory what they do. Plot and background, we talked about that. Uh, plot object line weights, we definitely want that. That's why by default it's checked in most templates. Um, we assume that the line widths you've configured within the drawing, you want them to come out and be reflected on the paper, so that's why it's checked. If for some reason you don't, though, of course, you just uncheck the box and they come out all thin, and they have the same line weights. Plot transparency, uh, that deals with whether or not you can see through objects, depending on what kinds of objects they are, like hatches, solid hatches you might apply a transparency to. Um, by default, it's unchecked, takes more resources, um, and depending on whether you're going to a physical plotter or a soft plotter, it can have implications there as well. Uh, PDFs with transparency are a little ugly, uh, but <laughs> still you might want to make them anyway, so that's why the checkbox is there. Plot with plot styles. Now we do want to plot with plot styles. Uh, from the model tab, though, it's typically unchecked by default. If you're going to a layout tab, it'll be checked by default in most cases. Plot paper space last, that's checked by default. Uh, hide paper space objects. Um, like when you plot, maybe you don't want any of the paper space objects to appear, like your viewport window, for example, or your title block. You just want the content of the viewport to plot. Um, in this case, there's no viewport since we're on the model tab. That's why this stuff's all uh, grayed out, because on the model tab, there is no paper space, which is why these two sections here talking about paper space, they're grayed out. I can't do anything with them right now. Plot stamp on. We talked about that a little bit, whether or not you want to have a plot stamp. This just makes sure that it comes out on your plot. Uh, save changes to layout. Um, if I don't click this apply to layout button, all these things I've applied here, the plot style table, the printer, uh, what have you, the paper size, if I just say OK and plot it, none of this stuff necessarily gets applied and saved. Um, so if I have this checked and I forget to hit apply to layout, then when I hit OK and I complete my plot job, the changes will automatically get saved to, in this case, the model tab. Drawing orientation, pretty self-explanatory there. Is it going to come out portrait? Is it going to come out landscape? Do I want to plot upside down for some reason? Uh, and you can collapse this other panel over here, but most of the time you'll want to leave it expanded. So the other thing I wanted to cover real quick here is plotting from a layout. It's different than plotting from a model tab because scaling isn't handled in the plot dialog. Scaling is handled in your viewport properties. For example, I've got this top one here, and it is set to an, a scale of 3 inch equals a foot. Um, this viewport down here, its scale is set for 3 quarter inch equals a foot. So you can, since you can have different viewports and have different scales within them, when you go to plot, consequently, you're going to be plotting at a scale of 1 to 1. Because the layout is literally a preview 
of your piece of paper that you're going to plot. Or you know, if you're making a PDF, it's the same thing. It's a, it's a preview of the page that in your PDF that you're going to make. So when you plot from layout, again, all these things that we saw before when we plotted from the model tab, they're going to be the same. Now we notice that the things that mention paper space, though, the check boxes are now lit up in here, of course, because we have paper space in the layout tab, whereas we don't on the model tab. But all the other options are the same here. Um, in most cases, extents and layout are going to be the same. Window, same thing. Display, there's a lot of question about what display means. And display, whether you're plotting from the model tab or the layout tab, it means basically what you see on the screen. So if I, for example, cancel out of here and I zoom in, okay, that's what I see. And if I go to plot now, and I set it for display, and I want to center the plot maybe, and uh, let's fit it to paper because I don't want to print to scale, and let's do a preview. That's what's shown on the screen. So it's not going to print my entire layout, whereas if I hit layout and do that same preview, I get the whole layout, just like that. So hopefully, uh, these things we've gone through here can give you some insight as to uh, options you want to use for plotting. Uh, we didn't get into publishing. That's a different, different webinar, publishing. But plotting is something that, uh, whether you're sending out jobs for people to review or whether you're plotting them out to put them on a wall, whatever, um, it's something that's important to know how to do, and that's why we wanted to go through these settings with you today. Um, <clears throat> don't have a whole lot of time left for questions, but if we do see any in there, we'll have a look real quick. Hey, Zach. Yeah. Can you just uh, show them again the PDF, DWG to PDF uh, settings, the dialog box, please, so how to get to it? And uh... Sure. You bet. So a couple ways you can get to it. If you've chosen it as your plot device, you'll have a properties button right next to it, <clears throat> which then brings it up. Uh, there's also the PDF options right here which by and large are the same things that you can get into if you drill into custom properties here. Looks familiar, doesn't it? Um, but with this, uh, with this properties button here, you get a lot more things <clears throat> available to change, like your paper sizes and whatnot. Um, if you go to PDF options here, you just get more of the quality things, not so much the paper sizes or the margins or whatnot. But, uh, and you can also get through these as well if you go to the Plotter Manager, which brings up that Explorer window, and you can just double click on DWD to PDF, brings it up here, same settings are all available in here. So I hope that answers the question. Uh, before we go, we do want to throw out one last poll, and it's uh, maybe everybody's favorite, I don't know. Uh, let's take a look. And that is, did you learn something new today? And uh, hopefully, even if it's the legacy stuff that nobody uses, maybe you didn't know about it. Hope oh, that counts. <laughs> we'll take it anyway. All right. So it looks like just about just about everybody's voted there. So I'll close this out. And uh, oh, we're getting a lot more no's now. Okay. I would say that's the long-term users chiming in there. Uh, for plotting, you know, if you've used the program for a long time, there really isn't anything newer under the sun. We haven't changed a whole lot as far as plotting goes in a long time. So let's we'll quickly share the results up with that for you there. And they're about what they usually are. So that's good. And just to see if we can cover any last-minute questions. Damon, do you see any in there that we could maybe hit real quick? No, I just want to plug in my uh, Revit IQ webinar. Woohoo! I oh, absolutely. Uh, somebody's asking that question if there are any. So yes, we do have a Revit IQ webinar as well. Fantastic! And uh, and as I mentioned before, we will be getting more webinars up for the AutoCAD vertical products as well. So we're really trying to expand this webinar series out to include a lot of the different products that people are using, and uh, let you know some of the cool features in all of them. Yeah, there. That's called the AEC Collections webinar series, as well. We, the next month is basically on BIM 360 Blue, 
and uh, after that we'll come back to Revit again. Perfect. Sweet. All right. And with the slide deck that you have, uh, you'll have some of these uh, links here, some basic resources for you. Uh, as always, you can catch up with any of these URLs here. And uh, as always, we, of course, thank you for attending and hope to see you here next time in the Back to Basics webinar series.